make your way to John chapter 14. Appreciate our worship team getting us ready right there to hear the word of God. And even that last song, it's going to be the theme of what we're going to talk about this morning. And what God desires to see happen in your life is even greater things. And I love this right here because Jesus tells us that right here. In John chapter 14. Come on, John. In verse 12, some encouraging words to his disciples. He tells them, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing. And they will do, here it is, even greater things than these. Because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And you may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. I mean, some encouraging words for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he says, you know what? If you have faith in me, you're going to continue to do what I do, but you're going to do even greater things. Because I'm going to God, and I'm going to be up there. And he knew that he was going to go die for the salvation of the world. And everybody that would come into a true and right relationship with him, one of the things they would receive, it was the Holy Spirit. And you could tap into that and pray to God, and God would work in your life. God has called us to even greater things. Being called into a relationship with God, I put before you, it isn't being called to a good life. Right. You have been called to a great life. Come on. Yeah. The enemy of great is good. Mm. And I know that you want to witness not just good things in your life, but great things in your life. Yeah. Isn't it amazing to understand with your faith in Jesus that you would be able to do even greater things? Then Jesus Christ. I mean, that's blowing. That is blowing to think that right there. And you're like, well, how can that be? I mean, Jesus is pretty awesome. Yeah. Are you like borderline blasphemous right there? Like, what's going on right here? What kind of church did I walk into this morning? Oh, I mean, yeah, Jesus did incredible miracles, cured people of leprosy, cured the blind. He rose people from the dead. Hey, you're telling me I'm going to do even greater things than that? Right. I'm not telling you. Jesus is telling you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what was he talking about right here? Yeah. Well, verse 12 gives us a hint. Come on. It tells us whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing. They'll be doing even greater things. Well, what were the works? Well, the greatest work that Jesus was doing was the salvation of souls for all of eternity. Yeah. That was the great work. But why are we going to do even greater things? Well, we understand that Jesus was just one man. Just one man. Yeah. Limited to just one area. Yeah. Just right there in Judea. But those that would have faith in Jesus, that they wouldn't just have an impact in Jerusalem. Yeah. They wouldn't just have an impact in just Judea. Yeah. They wouldn't just have an impact in Samaria. No, they would have an impact to the very ends of the earth. All nations, even greater things. I put before you, there is no greater work than the conversion of a soul. And you and I have the ability to impact souls and accomplish even greater things than Jesus. And it isn't it awesome to be part of a worldwide family of churches working together to live out that incredible heart right there that we see in the scriptures, that right before you, we are accomplishing even greater things. I mean, this year alone, we're planting 30 churches all over the world, internationally and domestically. I mean, it's incredible in a few weeks at the Northern Federation Missions Conference in Chicago, the Windy City. Okay. The Holy Spirit is blowing out four mission teams. Whoa. Bozeman, Montana. Hey. Brookings, South Dakota. St. Petersburg, Russia. It's Lisby, Georgia, and the Russian Commonwealth. Whoa. I mean, God is moving. At the European Missions Conference in London. Whoa. That I know we hope we'd all go to right now. Whoa. They're 
are sending out two mission teams. Brussels, Belgium. We love Belgium waffles, don't you? And the Dublin, Ireland mission team. Let's go, Irish. I mean, today, in Laramie, Wyoming, they're having their inaugural service. We just sent out from our sister church in San Francisco. After these plantings this year, we'll be in 43 states of the 50 states of America. After these plantings internationally, we'll be in 66 nations all over the world. Our brother church in Los Angeles will hit a thousand for the Lord today. There's just two baptisms away. God is doing even greater things. And why? Because you and I believe one thing in my lesson title today. We're called to greatness. Call to greatness. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. All right. And let's see this morning. What is this calling look like? Go over here to Genesis chapter 12. And we're going to study out the calling of Abram. Oh. Okay. We know later would be called Abraham. Yeah. Over here in Genesis chapter 12. Come on. Let's learn some things from the calling of Abram. It's great. And we're going to pick it up right here in verse 1. Catch up with me. We're a Bible church, so I hope you're following along. It says right here in verse 1. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I'll show you. I'll make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I'll make your name great, and you'll be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I'll curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram left. And as the Lord had told him, a lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old. But he set out from Haran. See, it's never too late to answer the call right there. Amen. He took his wife, Sarai, and his nephew, Lot. All the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan. And they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the side of the great tree Morah at Shechem. And at that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring, I'll give this land. And so he built an altar there to the Lord, who had appeared to them. From there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched this tent with Bethel in the west and Ai in the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. And Abraham set out and continued toward the Negev. And right here we see the Lord calls Abram. Yeah. That's how this scripture opens up. And we see right here that God dialed up his number. Nice. And he picked up, and he answered that call, and he sets out to the land that God was going to show him. Yes, even though he was an older man, even though he'd accumulated all this stuff, he answered that call. Why? Because he understood one thing, which is our first point this morning, destiny is calling. Destiny is calling. Destiny is calling. Destiny. God. Having a relationship with God. Yeah, come on. That's why God dialed up his number. What I love about this text right here, he goes out, he does all these incredible things, and God gives him a promise here. We'll get to that in a second. Yeah. But you look at this, and what I love about this beautiful moment is that yeah. we don't know really anything about Abram before this moment. Right. We don't know why he was specially chosen, but I love that because it reminds us this morning that it doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you come from. Yeah. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter how you grew up. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter if you're broke. It doesn't matter if you have a college degree or you don't. Destiny calls everyone. That's the specialness about a relationship with God. That he chooses you. And he dials up your number. You've had a rough life? That's okay. Maybe you had a better life. That's okay. God calls every individual on the planet because he desires a true and right relationship. And the promise right here that was given to Abraham, I put before you the same promise for you. He says, I will, God, I will make your name great. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I'm going to give you land. This is what I'm going to do for you. He's telling Abraham, whatever you think you could accomplish on your own, I can do even greater things. Right. And that's what people can think outside of relationship. Like, no, psh, I'm going to go do this. 
Mm -hmm. right? I'm going to be a millionaire. All right? I'm going to make it happen. Okay. All right? I'm going to be a social media star. All right? I'm going to go get my degree, and I'm going to make a cranking living right here. Six figures. What? All right? I'm getting a house out in El Dorado Hills. I'm going to be smoking and not joking. Right? I'm going to come on, and then when I'm ready, then when I'm ready, I get married, and then when I have kids, because I want my kids to grow up in church, then I'll get serious about God. Right? That's how some people think. Yeah. But God says, no, no, no. I can do this for you. In order for there to be greatness with God, what's the first thing we learn? There's got to be great obedience. He told them to leave. Leave your country. Leave your people. Leave your father's household. Leave your family. Go. He leaves. See, if God dials up your number, you know he's calling you to leave the situation you're in. The question is, are you going to grab your destiny? Where was Abraham in this moment? We know from scripture that helps us out, he was in Babylon. Babylon and the scripture is always equated with sin. It's always equated with world. So he was in the world. He was in the world. We know his situation where he was living at. Joshua 24 helps us that his daddy, right, Terah, built idols in Babylon. That was his business. Here's a false God for you. That's what he did. So we can infer that he was steeped in idolatry and maybe even religiosity. And God was down to his number. Hey, leave that situation. Yeah. Because I'm calling you to the right situation. I want to make your name great. I want to bless you. I have an incredible future. Mm, come on, bro. And this is the promise. I believe the thing that was inside of Abram, what he deeply desired, is what all of you desire at the end of the day, right. that you long for, yeah. that you hunger for, mm. that you thirst for, mm. is you desire a true and right relationship with God. God right. sets the eternities on our heart, but yet we're caught up in the world. We're caught up with Babylon. We're caught up with all these idols, hoping, you know, that money, hoping that success, hoping a relationship, hoping status, all these things yeah. would fill up that void that's lacking, but only one thing goes in there to fill up that void. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A true and right relationship with the Lord. Right. In my life, I was searching for the perfect woman. Oh. Oh. I was. <laughs> the perfect girl. The one. I was searching. If that woman would fulfill that greatest desire in my heart. Tell us what happened. Relationship after relationship after relationship. Never satisfied. Never satisfied. Even the girl that I was with, I wasn't even faithful to her. Because I just continued that search. Oh, but no, 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 that's not another one. But let me try this out. Yeah, but let me see if this works out. If this is work. Well, then I can, you know, it was just a joke. I thought making loads of money would be it. If I just have a lot of cash. If I just, you know, I'm just breaking necks and casting checks. Then man, then that'd be it. Helicopter rides, limousine rides, fancy dinners at Michelin restaurants, all this stuff. Then I would be happy. And I did all that stuff. But still, there was something missing. I'm going to award shows. I'm being honored. They're rolling out the red carpet for me. But still, there's a gaping hole. I thought, you know what, okay, well, that's not going to work. Then let me try to make it on the big screen. Let me go into acting and all that stuff. Because, you know, ultimately, it's a, I, I just want to be, I just want to be loved. Every actor wants to be loved. The other day. Because there was an emptiness. And I had no idea that what was really calling was destiny to fill that gaping hole. And I appreciate the example of Abram because when he was called to go, what do we see? He left. There was no hesitation. There was no argument. There was no discussion. There was no excuses. He just leaves. Hey, for some of us this morning, God is dialing up your number. Oh. Question is, are you blocking it? Oh. Question is, are you, are you ghosting it? Oh. Ghosting it, missing out the fact that actually God was actually giving you the Holy Ghost. Oh. The Holy Spirit. That that's what he wants to do. But maybe he's trying to, yeah, yeah, you gotta leave your home. You gotta leave your people. You gotta leave your country. You gotta leave the situation you're in and embrace the incredible destiny that God has for you. Because here's the thing the 
the impact is not just for you, right. but everybody else that God would work through you. Right. Yeah. That's what we don't understand because it wasn't just for Abram. The calling was, man, yeah. I'm going to do something great through you. Wow. Everyone's going to be blessed through you. Yeah. Are you fired up on the incredible yeah. blessing yeah. to yeah. impact the world? Yeah. And it doesn't stop at the waters of baptism. For Gio today, it doesn't just stop with him, but everybody else he's going to impact. For Jairus, it doesn't just stop right here. A ripple effect. For Ole, it's going to be a ripple effect. Just like it was. For Abram. He just got to answer the call. You know, I'll never forget, a couple of years ago, my wife and I were in the Bay, and we were overseeing uh, the east side of our sister church over there in San Francisco. Yep. Okay, okay. And we were overseeing, but one time before we moved back to Sacramento to take back over the church, there was this young man who was a campus student at the University of Berkeley. Nice. And you know the University of Berkeley is like the number two, number one public school in America. Yes. Mm. This, kid, this young man was incredibly smart, driven, I wanted to be a Navy SEAL, almost made it. Ooh. If anybody knows about the grueling the rigors of trying to be a Navy SEAL, it's intense. And he almost made it. So he decides, all right, I'm going to just go to school. Well, while he's on campus there at, at University of Ber UC Berkeley, he gets met by disciples, and he starts studying the Bible. Now, he grew up in the church, going with his family out there in the Bay for many, many years. And this guy, young man, saw the truth of the Scripture, saw the destiny was calling. Oh, my gosh. That's what I got to do. So he becomes a disciple, gets baptized. He's got a younger brother who's a teenager. His name is Josh. Josh is impacted, wide open, wants to change his life. He gets baptized. This obviously gets the attention of mom and dad. What is going on? Because they stopped going to the church that they grew up in. Like, what are you guys doing? We've got to go check this out. Well, Mark and Cecilia are incredible. And... Uh, very, very successful people grew up in the Bay Area. Martin had an incredible job working cybersecurity for the government. Uh, so anybody that knows Cecilia, she's a firecracker. Uh, this is a bold woman. They had a leadership role in the church that they were in. I mean, did you look at these guys like, oh my gosh, these guys are high mouth. But they were like, what is going on with our kids? Who's going, oh, they came to check this out. I'm like, okay, well, let's look at this out. Let's investigate. They decide to study the Bible. Whoa. They start studying the scriptures. Cecilia starts studying, but then it comes to this point, like, whoa, are you telling me this is where I'm at? All this stuff. I'm not telling you what the Bible is. And she had a hard time wrestling with that. It was a little bit of a sword fight right there. And she kind of backs off. I start studying with Martin, right, and, and going through. He's got to go on a, a slower pace than Cecilia right there. And, but Cecilia just couldn't fight the fact that the impact it was having on her kids I mean, she saw she had a hard time accepting it because she was, they'd been in that church forever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But wrestling with, because she loved God, yeah. loved God fiercely, loved. prayed and wrestled with the scriptures. Yeah. She surrendered to the calling, the wow. destiny was calling her to. And it was awesome because the sisters, along with my wife, got to baptize Cecilia yeah. in her backyard. <laughs> Mark wasn't quite there just yet. Pretty rational guy. Like, okay, uh, you know, he's got a heaven high a little bit. But still, he couldn't get outside the back. Like, oh my gosh, look at my teenage son. Mm -hmm. Look at my older son. Wow. Oh my gosh, now look at the changes in my wife. Wow. Oh my, my goodness. Right. Yeah. Himself, a man who loves God, wants to do what's right, right. wrestles with the scriptures. Oh. This guy humbles out to the word of God. Mm -hmm. I got to baptize him in the Bay Area on oh. his birthday, oh. right? In the same waters of the Bay Area right there. And it's awesome. These guys are incredible. Yeah. An incredible family. Yeah, right. uh, now they've uprooted their lives. They've been living in the Bay for a long time. They just recently moved down to our mother church down in Los Angeles. Oh, and their wow. shepherds and train right there. Having an incredible time. Oh, wow. But what I preach about their example is that every excuse, mm -hmm. that every reason in the book to hesitate. They had so many arguments they could have come up with. Right. So many things they could have discussed. But they wrestled with the Lord, mm -hmm. and they answered destinies. Come on. I'm asking you this morning, are you going to answer the same call? Mm -hmm. And even do the same thing that the Lord has done, and just with, with Martin and Cecilia, and with their kids. Because the impact wasn't just for Ethan. Mm -hmm. 
It wasn't just freezing. And I don't think he really quantified like, man, is my family going to make it? But they absolutely did. And the impact's not just for you. It's for everyone else around you. Every way that you're going. Because God desires a relationship with everyone. Let's have the heart to answer that call as destiny is calling. Pick up. Don't hang up. Are you with me this morning? Let's go up here to Hebrews chapter 11. Come on, brother. Come on, Jacob. 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 On this journey, my last point for you this morning. Faith and trust guide you to your destined destination. Faith and trust guide you to your destined destination. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. The Bible says this, By faith, Abram, when he called to go to a place he would later receive as an inheritance, obeyed and went. Even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land. Like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents as did Isaac and Jacob who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. This is a great scripture that gives us an insight into Abram's life. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, so we know, doubles down, like when he was called to go, he, he leaves. Yep. And he would later receive his inheritance. And that inheritance that he was hoping to receive wasn't just the plot of land that we given him. Yeah. What he was looking forward to was heaven. Mm. That's what he was longing for. Mm. Heaven. Mm. That one day he would get to go and be with God. The scripture says, but stuck out to me, is he lived in tents. Yeah. I don't know how many of you would like to live in a tent. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some of you don't like to go camping. I think it's great. You know, you prefer glamping. Yeah. Right? Give me, give me a motorhome. Give me a camper, okay? All right. Hook up a fifth wheel from the back of the truck. I'm good. All right, your sister's like, they got the kids there because they want to do my hair. <laughs> Can I bring my TV? They got Wi-Fi signal out there. You know what I'm talking about, right? All right, that's what we prefer. That wasn't how Abraham rolled. No. He was wandering. And what he had to embrace and learn was faith and trust in God as he was guiding him to his destination which would be heaven one day, right? Go back over here to Genesis chapter 12, because you're going to see this is something that he had to learn, something that he had to figure out. Like the song says, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasure laid up somewhere beyond the blue. That's the song. Abraham was looking forward to heaven. That's what he was learning. But, you know, we know him as the father of faith, as the scripture tells us. But you're going to learn right here. That wasn't always who he was. He had to learn how to be that guy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Check this moment out right here in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 10. Now there was a famine in the land. And Abram went down to Egypt to live there for a while because there was a, the famine was severe. As he was about to enter, he said to his wife, Sarah, I know what a beautiful woman you are. Like my wife, Courtney. Yeah. When the Egyptians see you, they'll say, this is his wife. And they'll kill me, but let you live. Okay. Say you're my sister, so that I'll be treated well for your sake, and my life will be spared because of you. When Abram came to Egypt, the Egyptians saw that she was a very beautiful woman. And when Pharaoh's official saw her, they praised her, they, they praised her to Pharaoh, and she was taken into his palace. Oh, no. And he treated Abram well for her sake and acquired sheep and cattle, male and female donkeys, men servants, maid servants, and cattle. He gets all this stuff done in his wife. Oh, no. But the Lord inflicted serious disease on Pharaoh and his household because of Abram's wife, Sarah. So Pharaoh summoned Abram. What have you done to me? He said. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she's my sister? So I took her to be my wife. Whoa. Now then, here is your wife. Take her and go. And Pharaoh gave orders to Abram and to his men, and they sent him on his way with his wife. And everything he had. Oh, oh my God. Dude. Not a shining moment no, for our father of faith, Abraham. Oh, the Bible says, here's what happened. There was a famine in the land. It was a dark and hopeless situation. Famine. Didn't know what was going to happen. And what we see, he decides to go down to Egypt. Anytime the scripture sometimes says go down, that's not usually a good place. We always want to meet people going up. But he goes down. We know Egypt signifies the world. 
Right? We know that from the Israelites, right? They are coming out of Egypt, coming out of slavery. Yeah. So what he starts, what he decides to rely on is the world. We don't see him right here in this moment inquiring of God. He takes this decision on his own. I think there's a famine. This looks, this looks dra uh, you know, drastic. All right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down to Egypt. And he makes that decision. And he concocts this idea that you can imagine he's like riding through, he's going through, and he's like, oh man, my wife's pretty beautiful. Darn it. All right, I know this. I kind of know these guys are probably gonna, they're gonna kill me right. and they're gonna want to take you. And so this guy is totally fearful. Yeah. And this is what God was gonna drive out mm. of Abraham. Why? Because where was he coming from too? He was coming out of Babylon, mm. unlearning how he dealt with it, unlearning how he trusted, unlearning not being a man of Fear, but a man of faith. If there's a famine, if there seems like a hopeless situation in my life, I'm not turning to the world and my instincts and how I used to operate. No, I'm relying on God because God told me I'm going to bless you. God's not a liar. Abram was a liar in that moment. He partially lied. It's still a complete lie. That's true. And you know what? He got scared, and it wasn't just going to affect him. It's going to affect his wife. Yeah. Yeah. Husbands, we got to be worried on how, how, how we lead our wives. Right. We lead. We don't lead them into sin with us. We help them and guide them spiritually. Yeah. yeah. And we don't allow our fear hmm. to overtake and affect them and affect the whole house, which was exactly what was happening right here in this moment. Right. right? He almost was in danger of messing up the blessing. What was it the blessing? Like the offspring was going to come from him. But if something would have happened between Sarai and Pharaoh, that was it. That was it. And he's about to mess up the blessing because of fear. And he later, he had to learn this lesson. Later on, a couple chapters later, he blows it with Hagar. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that in history, you go back to like, That's they're true. still dealing with that situation mm -hmm. to this day. Yeah, right. To this day, the Middle East is jacked up because, because of this one moment. Yeah. On this journey to the promised land and to heaven, we gotta trust what God is doing at all times. We gotta trust. Yeah. For some of us, we think like, man, I, I, I really want a relationship. Nope. I really want a boyfriend. Oh. I really want a girlfriend. Oh. I really want to get married one day. Oh. There's a famine, Lord. <laughs> a famine. Oh. I don't see. It's drastic. It's not going to happen for me, Lord. Oh, no. oh, my gosh. God, I want this miracle in my life. I want you to change this situation in my life. God, I don't see. I feel like there's a family. You say all this stuff in your scriptures, but I'm not seeing it, God. Yeah. All right, you know what? I'm going to go off on my own. We forget at the end of the day for Abraham. Here's the thing that he had to wrestle with. He had to wrestle with. This stuff that even God was telling him, he wasn't even going to be able to experience himself. Wow. He says, I will give your descendants this land. Wow. He wasn't even going to get the land. Wow. But by his faith, right. by his faith, they would get it. And that's the faith that he had to have. Okay, I'm not going to experience all this blessing, but man, I got to hold on because this is for our future descendants. So if it's rough right now, you gotta understand. Maybe it's just not for you right now, right. but your faith is gonna inspire others right. because you hold on yeah. and you're yeah. not giving way to fear. Come on, girl. Yeah. You don't understand that maybe somebody look back years from now, like man, she went through it. Yeah. Wow, that inspires me. If she can go right. through it, I can go yeah. through it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, he went through it. Wow. All these things that he hoped to get, he didn't get them. But man, he held on. Oh that inspires God. me. If he didn't quit, I won't quit. Right. Yeah. You know what he believed? A couple of chapters later. Because I get it. We want rewards. Don't we? We want rewards, right? Don't we? That's why you get those gift cards right there and like membership rewards, the Safeway and all that stuff. And, you know, Chick-fil-A right there. Okay. Oh, 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 scan my app right there because I want that for Safeway. You know what I'm saying? Because you paid for it. Like, I want my free sandwich. Right? Starbucks right there. My rewards right there. What about it? 
Oh, it's a 10 star today. Can you make sure you get that? Right? Oh, okay. All right, can you pay for it? We can bring that Starbucks star attitude into the kingdom. We can bring that free Chick-fil-A sandwich into the kingdom. I've been showing up. I've been sitting right there, God. I'm trying to move forward right here, but look. I'm showing up. Right. I'm there at Bible talk. I'm sharing my faith. Right. God, I'm giving my contribution. Right. I'm blowing out my special missions. I'm out there sharing my faith. God, I'm pouring it out. All right, I'm having a love that overcomes a multitude of sins, okay? God, my, my roommates, you know, that they won't, won't, won't wash the dishes. Oh. Keep leaving my clothes in there. God, I'm putting up with my spouse. I'm putting up with, you don't know how. You don't know who I, I got to live with. Dude. You don't know who I got to live with. Okay. I got a hard life, Lord. <laughs> Come on. God, you don't know my kids. You don't know all the things they're going to do. And we think that we deserve some kind of reward at the end of like two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, six months. But we forget. We fail to believe what Abraham had to believe, which God told him when I put before you, he was having a hard time. What does Genesis 15, verse 1 say? He tells him, do not be afraid. Yeah. I am your shield. Mm. You're very great. Why? Yeah. What was the reward at the end of the day? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's what this has to be yeah. about at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. If this is about being with God right. to the end. Right. That you have a faith, that you have a trust. That no matter what may happen in your life, whatever famines may you incur through this journey right there, because we have no idea. But man, you have faith, you have a trust, because you know where you're going, and you got you're guided to your destined destination, heaven one day. That's the promise for you and me. You gotta believe that this morning, because we're tempted to want to pull our hearts back when it gets hard. When you worry, when you're prone to worry, you'll pull back. You'll be tempted to lean on your understanding. But you got to trust God and what he's doing at all times. We don't pull back on our sacrifice. We don't pull back on our commitment. We don't pull back when it gets tough. We push back. Yay. And we keep moving forward. Right. You know, I've had to learn this. I'm still, here I am, I'm, like, I'm still learning this. And this is the beauty. God doesn't give up on us. There's grace. And, and i got to be a man that's willing to continue to take risks. Abraham had to take a risk right there. Like, Whoa. He should have stayed where he was at. And trusted God. Yeah. Right, he came from Bethel, which is the house of God. He should have went back. Yeah. Instead, he goes to Egypt. Wow. And when we take risks, we've got to be faithful and not fearful. And I learned that earlier this year. And um, I'm ex I was excited to come back and take over the church here in Sacramento. Hey. I love this city. I love the people here. Um, this is my family. Yeah. And I was grateful to come back and jumped at the chance. Like, yes. Yeah. 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 And the minute you know, it hurt my heart that I had to go. But, you know, we got to trust God. Yeah. But coming back, I could always wanted to expand. I mean, Sacramento's awesome in this area. There's so yeah, much is. to do. Right. And, uh, and when I came back, it's a couple years. Okay, I, I, I want to send out a group someplace. Yeah. I had my eyes on, on Davis. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Davis is yeah. pretty awesome city. It's pretty cool. But I also had my eyes on Roseville. Yeah. And so I was praying about it and where to go, either Davis or Roseville, but the Spirit kept moving me towards Roseville. Mm. And I already knew it was going to lead the mission team plan. I'm like, yeah, Victor and Abigail Polito. They just got appointed an evangelist and we're just earlier this year. Like, absolutely. Those guys are going to go do it. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, do it. And we're planning and scheming stuff and I'll never forget one conversation we're sitting down with them at a counseling session and uh, we just start talking you know and on a mission team people gotta uproot themselves and go live and set up new shop and stuff like that and so we skipped into talking about new housing and apartments and money and budget and all this stuff and if you can see inside I started flinching, flinching. oh man security deposit first month's rent you know, all this stuff, like I'm a logistics, like, oh. and then I started going, you know what, maybe we just go like American River College, <laughs> Carmichael, you know, there's six cars, like, nobody's got to move, <laughs> so we don't got to spend any money, hey. right? And if anybody knows me, 
uh, where my faith gets tested is money. I'm always thinking about the cost. That's my thought. Now, be grateful that your evangelist right here is not willy nilly with money, like, oh, yeah, hey, you need money, we'll buy this over here, yeah, let's get this over here. Like, that's like, I, I, I'm on the pendulum, like, over here, like, oh, hey, hey, hey. Hey, how much that cost? Man, shit with the Facebook marketplace, all right? So it exposed my heart. I will never forget my wife. I love my wife. She's awesome. She's like, she was like, like, babe, like, like you were so fired up for Roseville, but something happened. And we started talking about money. And we started talking about how much it costs. You wanted to go another way. Doesn't sound very faithful to me. Studying out even just stuff in scriptures about willing to take a risk. I'm like, man. Come on, Jacob. And so I'm like, you know what? No. We're going to get the team together. We're going to make this oh, happen. Yeah. We're going to find a way. Amen. If it costs this much, we're going to drop this much. We are going to send out a mission team to Roseville and make it happen by faith. And you ask yourself, has it been worth the risk? Yeah. I think Keegan would say yes. Yeah. Anything great without taking risks. Right. Right. And I've been reminded of that. Abraham had to learn that. Yeah. And I want to close with this and understand that God is probably telling you to take a risk right now. Yeah. And have faith and trust in Him. I want to close with a quote Come on, Living with fear stops us from taking risks. Mm -hmm. If you never go out on the branch, you're never going to get the best fruits. Mm -hmm. And God wants you to go out onto the branch church family this morning. So you can grab the best fruits. Let us have a faith and a total trust in God on this journey, no matter what is happening. That you have at the end of the day the greatest reward you could ever have. And that's a relationship with God. Amen. Don't mess up the blessing. Don't mess it up. But take the risk because it's absolutely worth it. Yeah. And watch God work. Yeah. God has called us to greatness. Yeah. He's calling you to greatness this morning. And if He is dialing your number, pick up. Don't put on hold. Be bold and go where God is calling you to go. I love you.